when you hear how great the economy is doing right now. Let's just remember uh, when this recovery started. Um, when you hear about this economic miracle that's been going on, actually, those job numbers are the same as they were in 2015 and 2016. I think he was trying to take some credit. He was trying to take credit for this incredible thing that's happening to our country. And you look at those bad numbers that were there in the last couple of years, it was this way and going in the wrong direction. It wasn't going in the wrong direction. It wasn't this way. It was this way. You're right, President Trump. It wasn't this way, but it wasn't the wrong direction. It is time for my favorite part of the show, Money, Power, Politics. You heard it over and over this weekend. President Trump and former President Obama arguing over who should get credit for the economy, a critical issue for the midterms. So let's look at the numbers. In the 19 months since President Trump took over, the economy has added about 3.5 million jobs. In the last 19 months of the Obama presidency, the economy added nearly 4 million jobs. Another way to look at that would be to compare the average job gains per month. It shows President Obama averaging about 208,000 jobs added since July 2015, compared to an average of 188,000 jobs under President Trump. The president also likes to brag that the unemployment rate is near its lowest point in decades. He's right. But please look at this chart. The jobless rate has been dropping steadily for more than nine years. That's Obama territory. That said, there have been big milestones on Trump's watch. The markets are near record highs. Wages are starting to rise. And for the first time in at least a generation, there are more open jobs than job seekers. But how much of that is because of the president's policies. The Center for Economic Policy Research did a study back in July and found that when comparing similar economic models, an economy without Trump does about the same as an economy with Trump. In other words, there is no Trump effect. I want to bring in Austin Goolsby, former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under President Obama. He's currently a professor at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. All right, Austin. Study says President Trump did not do much to help the economy, but he didn't hurt it either. What's your take? Uh, that sounds about right. Look, we've had, I think, 115 months of private sector job growth, and 19 of those were under Trump. So what is that, like 15 percent? I, I don't see how you come into the game with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Your team is already ahead, and you're like, I won this game. I mean, I mean Yes, he has. It hasn't gotten worse. Job growth's a little bit slower, but the economy's going okay. I think the shame is on us for letting President Trump trumpet only the news on the days when it's good, and then just change the subject if the if the numbers come in not as good. So but if the economy we had one good quarter of GDP, but that forgets that last quarter and all of last year was mediocre. But Why the, do we let them do that? If the economy was so good, if the jobs picture was so rosy under President Obama, where did all of those forgotten Americans come from that rose up and said, I want something different, who voted for Trump? Well, that's you're, you, there's an implicit theory in that statement, and your theory is that it was about economics, why Donald Trump won. I, I don't subscribe to that theory. I think it was a lot more complicated. There was a lot of racial resentment. There were issues about immigration, and things like that were more important than the jobs were. But, I mean, just look at the numbers. The, as you sh just showed, the job creation was actually stronger under President Obama. And at best, you would say it's been a continuation of a steady trend. After we avoided the Depression, we've been chugging along, and we're now one of the longest booms in U.S. economic history. Okay, well, let's talk about business confidence, because Jeff Cox of CNBC wrote this. Business confidence is soaring, in part thanks to a softer regulatory environment. Consumer sentiment, by one measure, is at its highest level in 18 years. Corporate profits, owed in good part to last year's tax cuts, are coming close to setting records. Each of those accomplishments can be tied either directly to new policies or at least indirectly through a brimming sense of hope from businesses that the White House is back on their side. Now, 
I speak to CEOs all the time. Whether they like Trump or not, they will say it is a more business friendly administration. When President Obama was in office, the threat, the regulatory overhang, not knowing what regulation was going to come down the pike, prevented them from reinvesting and hiring. Well, I, I mean, Stephanie, I guess my question is why then was job creation faster under President Obama? If this regulatory cloud was so detrimental, why was GDP growth in 2017 only 2.2 percent? I, I have no doubt that corporations got a two trillion dollar tax cut. They're happy about that. And you see in their corporate profits, they've never had higher corporate profits than they do now. That hasn't translated into faster job growth. That hasn't translated into faster wage growth. And so I, I'm glad that they feel good about themselves, but like many things, like the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate is getting down to close to record levels. It started getting better many years ago, and it's continued at around the same rate, and now we're at a level that's very low. Okay, business confidence. Business confidence in January of 2009, in the midst of the financial crisis, was rather low. So we had a pretty substantial improvement of business confidence, and it's continued to get better. Austin, you make excellent points. Congressman, take me to the blue collar worker. You're a former electrician yourself. Um, uh, you were part of a union. I understand why big business is super bulled up on the president. Those tax cuts were out of this world. But the argument has been it's going to trickle down to workers. We're not seeing that yet in the numbers. Tell me what your voters are telling you. Well, this is the world according to Trump. You know, the truck and was guess going, what? He's a great salesman. Absolutely. He, the truck was going 60 miles an hour when he took over. He jumped in the driver's seat and still doing 60. He hasn't crashed it yet, but we'll wait to see what happens. You know, I was just on the job last week talking to the men and women. <coughs> They're still waiting for that great tax effect to hit them. It hasn't. You know, saying a job is the most important thing is only half the story. A job that actually pays enough money for you to take care of the family is the true story. So people have jobs, but it wasn't what they enjoyed even a uh, decade ago. You know, if they lost their job in an automobile plant making 30 bucks an hour, they're re-employed today making a fraction of that. And the biggest issue that's coming on is corporate America in general has moved the retirement issue off their platter and back on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. We have a train coming down the road that is absolutely going to devastate our seniors who aren't going to have enough to live. Study last week, one in five have less than $5,000 put away for the retirement. $5,000. Well, we're living in a world of short-termism, where people aren't voting according to that. They're not saying we have a, a long-term problem. Brett, you have all these people who have voted for the president who buy in to his, I'm just going to call it, extraordinary showmanship and salesmanship, but he's not actually delivering the numbers. When are they going to start to wake up and say, oh, my God, these tax cuts only held corporate America. They're never going to get to me. I'm not so sure I agree with the premise of your question. I mean, wage growth has been slow, but it's starting to pick up. Business investment is stronger than it's been uh, in a very long time. And so something that Austin was saying, yeah, it's true that job growth has been slower because we are getting very close to full, full employment. It's easier to bring uh, unemployment down from its heights in 2009, 9, 10% down to 6 or 7% than it is once you're, you, once, once you're yeah. reaching full employment. Look, I think Democrats have a real, real problem here, and they have to be careful. I remember right after the election, very prominent Democratic-leaning economists saying the stock market is going to tank, we're going to go into a, a, the, the, the world economy is going to collapse. None of that happened. Of course Trump uh, uh, is overselling the economy. Of course he's taking credit for things he's not responsible for. But Democrats run the risk of being sour about an economy that's actually doing pretty well, all things considered. And if wage growth starts to grow up, then that's going to be a problem on the Democratic side when, when Republicans say, hey, you guys were saying that wage growth was never going to happen, and now it is. It reminds me a little bit of the way people like Bob Dole, Dole and Jack Kemp were talking about the economy in the
in the 1990s when Bill Clinton steamrolled to, to an election. So I'm just cautioning Democrats to be careful about being sort of the bad news ninnies when it comes to what is really a pretty robust economy moving well past what should have been its sell-by date for a new recession. The economy's uh, going, but it's leaving the little guy behind, and that's the difference. Austin, uh, do you want to comment on that? Because as much as we say well, hot button issues insightful. like reproductive uh, rights and immigration matter to voters, if voters have money in their pocket, even a little bit more, and they feel confident, that's how they vote. Yes and no. Look, I, I think that there is a danger. I thought that was insightful. There is a danger if the Democrats are going to say, oh, the economy's not good. I think the economy is going pretty well. My only point is, it's not that much better than, than what it has been. And I think the danger for the Republicans, if it's going to be about the economy, is they passed a $2 trillion tax cut for big corporations and high-income people. And if you remember, they sold that by saying that the average worker was going to get a $4,000 raise. That's what they said. So people are going around saying, hashtag, where's my $4,000? So wages might go up a little. I hope they do. But, you know, if this economy is mainly going to deliver for big corporations that already had record levels of profit and for high income people who already were doing really well, I think there's a danger for the Republican Party to kind of get themselves out on an island that everybody else is not on. And remember, there's a very big difference between workers getting a one time bonus and a raise. A raise sticks with you. A bonus, that's just a little kiss. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.